Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church Online. We are pumped today. Yes. God is moving. Absolutely. You are going to so enjoy the Word of God that you're preaching. I know it's going to be powerful. Got great worship coming. So get ready to praise the Lord with us. Now we see you there. You're, you're sitting on the couch and you're some, <laughs> you got your pajamas on. That's oh. okay. But you can make a joyful noise even in your PJs. Absolutely. So let's enter on in. Glory to God. Hey, some of you need a haircut. That's okay. It's all good. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's worship him together. What do you say we focus ourselves on him? Set our mind on things above. Tell the Lord you love him right where you are. Lord, we love you today. And we thank you for the love that you've shown toward us. We worship you together in Jesus' name. Are you ready, friends? Jesus. 
glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills Didn't you enjoy that wonderful time of worship? And I know even though we're not right here in the sanctuary worshiping the Lord together in person, we are at the same place spiritually. We're in the same room spiritually. We're in the throne room of grace. Let's just lift our hands one more time and just say thank you, Lord, for ministering unto us by your wonderful, wonderful presence. And Lord, I just thank you right now that physical bodies are being quickened because of the anointing that is saturating them. They're in their homes. We thank you, Lord. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. And we are connected as a family around the throne of God today. Thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Well, we just want to tell you once again how much we love you and miss you, but we are glad that we can come together in this fashion. There's still great things that are going on here at Heart of the Bay, things that you can be a part of, and we appreciate that so much. Now, last week we sent out a survey, and it was regarding the reopening of our church. This survey was created with you in mind, so as we continue our preparations for reopening, reopening in our, our in-person services, we'll know, we'll have some things in place. Now, we ask you to complete that survey by June 10th. Perhaps you haven't done it yet. It's not too late. So go ahead, get that finished if you have not done so yet. We appreciate that. And then once again, this week, we're going to be having our grocery giveaway on Saturday, June 20th. The instructions there on getting signed up are, are there on the screen. We've been getting some really good reports. It's just such a blessing to be able to be a blessing to our community. Lives are being touched, touched physically through the love of God by meeting their needs with food. And then also prayer is being made available to them. Well, as I was thinking about preparing to exhort you during the offering time today, you know what kept coming up in my heart was thankfulness for the faithfulness faithfulness of our Father, faithfulness of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's one of his names. Over in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, it says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. That is who Jesus is. It's not something that he does when he feels like it. No, it's who he is. He can't be any other way. It's his very nature. It's who he is. He's faithful to us. And you know, when we get born again as believers, that faithfulness, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It comes to live on the inside of us. If that's who he is, then that's who we is. We should be faithful. We should be, be developing the fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is this. It's love. It's joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Well, there's a thought right there. How about we as Christians be kind? We be good. <laughs> we are agents of love and of peace. That's great, isn't it? Now, I know when fruit season is, when it's time for the fruit to come forth on trees, there's stages. We have some fruit trees in our backyard. And not too long ago, I was noticing they were blooming there was little buds on them. And then just the other day, I went out and looked and there's tiny little fruit on them. So there's stages of fruit being developed on a tree. There's stages of fruit being developed in the life of a believer. You might say, well, you know, I'm just at the bud stage. <laughs> well, you can grow and you can develop in your love walk. You can grow and you can develop in being faithful, there's blessings and there's rewards for us nurturing and developing all of these fruits. Today, I want to highlight the fruit of faithfulness. We already said we're so thankful that God's faithful. We're so thankful that one of Jesus' names is faithful. But you know what? I'm thankful for each and every one of you and your faithfulness. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, that a faithful man will abound with blessing. Hallelujah. That is you and that is me. 
I know we've all been there. We've been tempted not to be faithful. We've been tempted to be unfaithful in praying, in reading the word. It's easy to let things slip and stop acting on what we know to do according to the word of God. It may even be a temptation to stop sowing and to stop giving. We're not here in the building. So you're like, well, you know, I'm not going to send in my tithes check today. I'm not going to mail my offering in. But I know that isn't you. Because I am happy to report here at Heart of the Bay, we got a faithful bunch. And when we are faithful, it qualifies us for the scripture I just read you in Proverbs. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. So Pastor Mark and I and the staff, we are praying the blessings of the Lord abound in your life. And we thank you for your faithfulness. It gives us standing ground to plead your case for God to bring blessing into your life. We are speaking abundance over you and your household. And I know you receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's all get ready to sow our very best seed right now. If you are texting your offering, the number is 28950. You can give in to the general fund by texting to HBCC, also into Heart for the House. The instructions are there. And you can give online. Many of you are mailing in your tithes and your offering checks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that we've given, let's just go ahead and pray over this offering. Oh, Father, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you are faithful and you are true and you are watching over your word to perform it in the lives of your people. And part of that word that you're watching over, as you said, a faithful man will abound with blessings. So Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of your people that they are continuing to sow of their substance. And Amitri say, and we speak abundance over them in the name of Jesus. We say that these households of faith are blessed, blessed, blessed in the wonderful name of of Jesus. Amen. Well, I know that you received that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you.
going to go ahead and look at a very, very important subject today. As you know, we've been doing the series on the essentials. And uh, what I want to talk to you about is the essentiality. I don't even know if that's a word, but if it isn't, we just made it up. But how essential it is to live by and to walk by faith. Now, the text that I want to look at <clears throat> this morning is from 1 Timothy 6, 12, where it says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, I'm going to stop right there. We are instructed in the Word of God to fight the good fight of faith. In order for us to fight the good fight of faith, it's very important for us to know what faith is. I want to remind you of a couple of scriptures, and I'll just quote them to you. In Romans chapter 1, I believe it's verse 17, it says, For therein is the righteousness revealed from faith to faith, for as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, if God has instructed us to live by faith, and then in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. So live by, walk by. It's very important for us to know that we have faith so that we can live by it, so that we can walk by it, and so that we can fight the good fight of faith. So a lot of people get hung up on this fact. Well, if I just had enough faith, or if I just had faith, oh God, give me faith. Well, the answer to your prayer was taken care of thousands of years ago. It's found in Romans chapter 12 in verse 3. It says, For I say through the grace given unto me, uh, uh, for every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but think soberly. Now notice this. This is at the very end of Romans 12, 3. For God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, somebody says, Pastor Mark, that was written to the church at Rome. Yes, it was written to the church at Rome, but it was written to those that were born again Christians. And what belongs to the church at Rome belongs to the church right here in the San Francisco Bay Area. It belongs to you. So you and I have been dealt the measure of faith. God has placed on the inside of us spiritual DNA. And part of your DNA is the faith of God. Praise God. That's good news. Now, because we have the faith of God, we can overcome whatever the enemy throws our way or whatever circumstances come our way. Listen to this scripture. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So God has placed his world overcoming faith, his disease overcoming faith, his poverty overcoming faith, his depression overcoming faith, and whatever it may be, he's placed that on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. So that's good news. That doesn't mean that, that, that means that you and I are not helpless pawns. We're not just here to say, oh, whatever will be, will be. Whatever will happen, will happen. No, God has given you and I mountain moving faith. Amen. So I think it's good to know um, what faith is. What does the Bible say about faith? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Then he goes on to say, the evidence of things not seen. So let me just unpack this uh, for you just a little bit. Now faith is. It is the substance of things hoped for. Now, when we say and when we see the word substance in the word of God, especially here in Hebrews 11.1, 1, that means foundation. That means that faith is our firm foundation. So what this is saying to us is this, is that God's word brings faith into our heart and into our life. Faith and the word of God really 
are synonymous terms. I remember Fred Price teaching years ago, you know, how can you separate the wet from the water? If you've got water, you've got wet. If you've got wet, you've got water. And so if you've got faith, you've got the word. And if you've got the word, you've got faith. So let's read it with this thought in mind. It says here in Hebrews 11:1, 1, now faith is, or we could read it this way, now the word of God is, the substance, the firm foundation of things that we hope for. Now realize the word hope there in Hebrews 11.1 1 means something that we confidently and favorably, favorably expect to happen. So what this is saying to us is now God's word is our firm foundation. It is the substance of things that we confidently expect to come to pass in our life. So what do we do? We get the word. We find the word of God that covers our case. For example, Matthew 8, 17 says, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So we find that, and that is something that we firmly establish in our heart, and it becomes our foundation. And so if you are battling a sickness and disease, get the word of God. Fix it firmly in your heart and it will be your foundation. It will be the substance, if you will, of things that you're expecting to happen for your life and in your life. That is such a wonderful principle. The word of God is our firm foundation of things we are expecting now, that also works in the area of your needs being met. Now, what you can do is you can look into the Word of God, into the exceeding great and precious promises. For example, Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need. He didn't say he'd supply half your need. He said he'd supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So I take that word, I fix it firmly in my heart, and I stand on that. That's my firm foundation. That's my substance. So Philippians 4.19 is my foundation of things that I'm expecting to happen in my life. I'm expecting God to meet my need. You can expect God to meet your need as you stand on the word of God, as you stand on your firm foundation. So now faith is. Now the word of God is. It's the substance of things hoped for. Do you see how important that is? Do you see how essential that is for you to live and for you to walk by and for you to fight the good fight of faith? And then the second part of Hebrews 11, 1 says this, that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Well, what is evidence? Evidence is proof. Evidence, one translation says, is the title deed. So it's saying this, the word of God is our title deed. It is the evidence of things not seen. In other words, of things we have not yet perceived by our five physical senses. God's word is all the evidence you need of your healing. God's word is all the evidence you need of him meeting your need. God's word is all the evidence that you will ever need. It is your title deed. Somebody says, yeah, but I don't see it yet. I don't feel it yet. Oh, just hold fast to the word of God. Fix the promises firmly in your heart and shout the victory because your scenery is about to change. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. And so I just wanted to encourage you with some of those ABCs, some of those basics of faith. Well, how does faith come? Well, you all know that. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come by having heard. Faith does not come by having heard yesterday or the day before. Your faith must be current. We must continuously be hearing and feeding on God's word and then faith will come, faith will grow, and faith will develop. Praise God. So how is it released, you would ask? Well, faith is released by what Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, For verily I say unto you, 
that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now notice this with me. Believing in your heart and saying with your mouth is the way that you release your faith. As a matter of fact, you all know this, but let me remind you, Christianity is called the great confession. Sure it is. Romans 10, 8 says, what, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. And then in verse 9 and 10 of Romans 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then dropping down to verse 10, it says, for with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we see this believing in our heart and saying with our mouth brings us unto some things. It brings us unto salvation. It brings you unto healing. It brings you unto your needs being met. If you want to get someplace in your life, if you want to get unto complete and total freedom, take God's word, believe it, and speak it, and let your commander in chief watch over his word to perform it on your behalf. He is the apostle and the high priest of our confession. Amen. So we've defined what faith is out of Hebrews 11.1. 1. We've declared how it comes out of Romans 10.17. And we have shown you from Mark 11.23 and Romans 10.9 and 10 how faith is released. Now are you ready to get to the message and to the crux of what I believe is so important for us to hear today. Again, our text is 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold now on eternal life, whereunto you have been called and have professed a good profession or a good confession before many witnesses. So to fight the good fight of faith, you and I need to understand this, that there is a fight to it. The enemy will try to talk us out of what God has said is ours. But this fight is a fixed fight. It's a fight that you and I can win every day of our life. Now the Apostle Paul, what an amazing, wonderful man of God. You know, he went through a lot of things. And maybe you're going through some things right now. But if you compare it to what the Apostle Paul went through, what you and I are facing, what you and I are going through are simply light afflictions. Now notice with me what Paul said at the very end of his life in the end of his ministry. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 in verses 6 through 8, he said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. In other words, Paul knew that it was time for him to go. Paul knew that he had finished his course. And he said, it's coming very soon. Now notice what he said, knowing full well that soon he was going to depart. He said in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, that's what we want to say when our departure time is coming. That's what we want to be able to declare when we know that it's time for us to go. We want to be able to say, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I have kept the faith. Oh, glory to God. What a testimony. Is that your heart today? Is that what you want to be able to say? Praise God, I know that it is. Now notice in verse 8, he said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but now listen to this, but unto all, that's you and that's me, unto all 
that love his appearing. Do you love his appearing? This is, this crown of righteousness is available to every born again Christian who will fight the good fight of faith, who will finish their course and keep the faith. Amen. And so let's answer this question this morning. What the good fight of faith is not. It's essential for us to know what it is not. Well, fighting the good fight of faith is not trying to defeat an already defeated foe. It's not trying to defeat the enemy. Jesus already defeated him. In Colossians 2.15, it says of what Jesus did to the enemy in his own backyard that he spoiled him. He spoiled the principalities and the powers. He made a show of them openly and he triumphed over them in it. Hallelujah. 1 John 3 a says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus did that through going to the cross by being buried and then on that third day being risen from the dead. The enemy is a defeated foe. And so we don't have to go out there and fight the devil. Jesus already whipped him for us. All we need to do is enforce his defeat by declaring that he's under our feet. Enforce his defeat by hiding his word in our heart and speaking it with our mouth. Enforce his defeat by pleading the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and living and walking in victory. I'm telling you what, I'm about ready to shout I'm about ready to dance. Glory to God. So fighting the good fight of faith is not trying to defeat an already defeated foe. Secondly, it is not, I repeat, it is not fighting with flesh and blood. Paul addressing the church at Ephesus said this, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. That's not where the battle is. But we do wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Yes, there is a battle. Yes, there is a fight. But our battle is in the spiritual realm with spiritual weapons. And as you become acquainted with your spiritual weapons, you enter in to such a place of rest and such a place of victory, not trying to do something in the flesh, but just taking biblical principles, just taking the weapons of your warfare and implementing them and walking on top of anything and everything that would come your way. Praise God. So then the next question is, Pastor Mark, how then do I fight the good fight of faith? Well, again, in 1 Timothy 6, 12, reading from the New King James Version, it says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, which you have also been called and have confessed the good confession. Notice that phrase. You have confessed the good confession in the presence of many enemies. So we see here from this verse that fighting the good fight of faith is connected to your confession. So one way that you and I fight the good of fight, fight of faith is finding what is written and speaking what is written. It is one of the greatest offensive weapons that you and I have at our disposal. You know, Paul said this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, as part of the whole armor of God, he says, I want you to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now the word, word there in Ephesians 6, 17 is the word rhema. So Paul is instructing us to put on the whole armor of God and part of that offensive armor is taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema or the spoken Word of God. Now, if we really were to break this down and study this a little bit further, we could look at the book of Revelation and we could see Jesus himself. For example, Revelation 1.16 says this, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun, 
shining in its strength. Notice with me, out of his mouth came that sharp two-edged sword. And then you just move a chapter over to 2.16 of Revelation. He says, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So Jesus himself is absolutely the best example of fighting the good fight of faith. You know, even in the wilderness, when he was tempted of the devil, the devil came along and tempted him three times. The first temptation, he said, if you're the son of God, why don't you just go ahead and command that these stones be made bread? But notice what Jesus said. He answered what the enemy said with it is written. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's that sword coming out of the master's mouth. That's the example that you and I want to follow. Then, of course, we know that the enemy took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of a temple. And he said, now, if you're the son of God, just go ahead and cast yourself down because, you know, he's going to give his angels charge over thee and so on. But in verse 7, Jesus said, it is written again. You see, it's good to know what is written, but it's also good to know what's written again. It is also written. It's important for us to know that. So Jesus said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. He put the devil right back in his place, didn't he? And then, of course, he took him up to an exceeding high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and said, all these things will I give thee if you will fall down and worship me. Now notice in verse 10, Jesus said to Satan, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Woo, glory to God. Don't you know the devil packed up his goods after that one? (laughs) He does, that's exactly what will happen. He'll pack up his goods when you declare what is written. When you resist the devil and you're submitted to God and live in a sold out life for God, the devil has no choice but to flee from you and to run from you as in tear. Amen and amen. And then the devil in verse 11 left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So how did Jesus overcome? How did he fight the good fight of faith? He did it with father-pleasing, world-overcoming faith. And that's the same way that you and I do it, by words filled with faith. Now I want to show you something else today that I think that will bless you and that is important for us to see. And I want to look at verse 12 of 1 Timothy 6 out of the Amplified Version. Notice with me. He said, now fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you have been summoned or called and for which you have confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Pay particular attention, if you would, this morning to that word, lay hold, laying hold. This will give us insight to what this is all about. He's saying here now, lay hold because something else is trying to get it away from you. Hold fast because the enemy is trying to take what you're holding fast to. See, the fight, let me just say it like this. This fight isn't trying to get God to do something or to defeat the devil. No, no. The fight is not letting anybody or anything take from you what you've laid hold of. What have you laid hold of? Have you laid hold of a promise from the word of God? I want to encourage you. Brendan, I want to encourage you to hold fast to it. Don't let it go. Just have bulldog faith. Praise God. Just like a bulldog won't let a bone go. You don't 
You don't let the promises go. It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. I know it's been tough. I know it's been difficult. But oh, thank God, he's given us the ability to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are on the winning team. We're on the winning side. We're going all the way to the other side. Amen. Have you read the Bible? In Genesis, we win. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, we win. We've read the beginning of the book. We've read the middle of the book. We've read the end of the Bible. And our outcome is victory. Amen. So there will be those times that the devourer will come. That's why he told us in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, we need to put our stake in the ground and declare, you know what? You may not de devour me. Now notice in verse 9, resist him steadfast, one translation says, with your faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So notice this with me. He comes, big deal. Resist him. He cannot stop us. He cannot stop you. The only option that that roaring lion will have is to flee. So I want to encourage you. Don't turn loose. Don't let go. Keep laying hold. Keep holding fast to the profession of your faith. See, the devil wants us to give up. He wants us to quit that faith fight. But I'm encouraging you this morning, get in the fight, stay in the fight, and be bold in this fight and declare, I am a good faith fighter. Go ahead and say that with me real strong. Praise the Lord. I see you in your PJs there. I see you reading that newspaper. Put that newspaper down. Some of you need to get some new PJs. I'm just kidding, just having a little fun. But declare it with me. Let your, lift up your voice right now and say it real strong. I am a good faith fighter. Glory to God. Say it again. I am a good faith fighter. Hallelujah. So lay hold of that and don't let it go. Amen. Again in verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on the eternal word of God. Whereunto you have been called or summoned and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Verse 13 says, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed, now listen to this, Jesus himself witnessed a good confession or a good profession before Pontius Pilate. Now listen to what the message says in verse 13. I asked you, did you wear your shouting clothes out there? Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to get up and rejoice and dance? Hallelujah. The message translation says this, I'm charging you before the life-giving God and before Christ who took his stand. Jesus is our example. Jesus took his stand before Pontius Pilate and didn't give him an inch. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Didn't give Pontius Pilate an inch. This is describing the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. And so that's what we do. We don't give that rat an inch. You give him an inch, he'll try to take a mile. That's why Ephesians 4, 27 says, give the devil no place. No room here for you. Now let's look at this in closing. As we look at John 18, let's look at this scenario in the word of God where Jesus went before Pontius Pilate. In verse 33, then Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, art thou the king of the Jews? Verse 34, Jesus answered and said, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you of this concerning me? Here's the thing we see here. Jesus didn't flinch. I mean, he, he is not scared one bit. Why? Because he's full of faith. He's full of faith. 
And then in verse 35, Pilate answered and said, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Verse 36, And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. And then Pilate. Pilate says, are you then a king? Now notice with me, there's no compromise. There's no hesitation in the master's next statement. And there must not be any compromise and there must not be any hesitation in our lives when we are confronted with the lies and the strategies of the enemy. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus answered, you rightly say that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Oh, my brothers and sisters, can you hear the confidence? Can you sense the boldness? His absolute refusal to back down. He didn't back down. Now, very quickly, we want to go to John 19. There was a, a little time in between the next meeting with Pilate and Jesus. They scourged him. Pilate's wife tried to talk him out of, you know, having Jesus crucified. Pilate, by this time, his knees were knocking. He didn't really know what to do. He was confused as what to do. He was under peer pressure. Now notice with me in John 19 and verse 10. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know? Do you not know? Listen to the pride there. Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you? And I have the power to release you. Do you not know? that I'm able to keep you from having church. Oops, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I didn't say that. Verse 11, and Jesus answered and said, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Now, folks, we are looking at our champion. We're looking at our master fighting the good fight of faith with unswerving faith. He's looking Pilate square in the face. He's looking death right in the face. And he's saying, Pilate, death, you have no power over me. Oh, my brothers and sisters, do you see this? Then when the enemy comes in to tell you you're a victim, you're helpless in your situation, you can do nothing, that's when something or someone needs to rise up on the inside of you and look the enemy square in the face. You have, Mr. Devil, no power over me. Sickness and disease, you can't harm me. Shelter in place, you can't harm me. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No unemployment that has come my way will keep me down because God is on my side. God is for me. He's living in me and I will walk in total victory. Hallelujah. We need to look the devil square in the face and tell him you got no power over me. You must fight the good fight of faith over sickness and depression and lack with the word of God. I'm encouraging you to rise up and declare, poverty, you have no power over me. Depression, you have no power over me. Now friends, if you'll do that, this is essential that you do this. This is primary that you do this. I implore you, I beg of you, I beseech you, get in the word. Get the word in you. Believe it. Speak it. Rise up in the name of Jesus in this day and hour. And if you will do that, God's power will come. And God's power will bring change. Just lay hold of the word. Wrap your arms around the word of God. Lay hold of it and say, this is mine. I'm not moving Friend, remember who you are in Christ 
and remember whose you are. That pleases your heavenly father. Your father gets so thrilled about that. You know, faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Your father sees that. He sees your faith. And it makes him proud. Oh, that's my son. That's my daughter in whom I am well pleased. Praise God. So here's what we've said today. Faith is essential. We're living by it. We're walking by it. We're fighting the good fight of faith with faith. Amen. And we are releasing it today in the name of Jesus. Sweetheart, come on up. Praise God. Make sure you're Mike is turned on. Yes, hang on. Hallelujah. We are on. I'm stirred up today. Me too. That was awesome word, wasn't I'm it? I'm stirred up. I am so thankful for the word of God and for the faithfulness of God. One of the things when you were preaching, it came to me the words to that one song. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes. So yes. we're not surrounded by bad news, even though it's out mm -hmm. there. We're surrounded by the faithfulness of God. Amen. And we are upheld by his powerful yeah. word that we heard today. And you know, another good thing to remember this, when you're getting in the word, you are strengthening your foundation. Yeah. Think about the two examples there in the gospels when Jesus said that, you know, one man built his house upon the sand right. and when the storms and the rain came, what happened to that house? Well, it fell. Yeah, it, great was to, the fall of it, the Bible says. Yeah, we used to sing a little song in Sunday school, the house went splat. It <laughs> fell down when the storms came. But then there was well, another. Was that again? <laughs> it went splat. Oops. <laughs> I mean, it was gone. Yeah. But then there's that other house. And yeah. I believe that that is the house that mm. you and I are built on. Household of faith. Household of faith. Built upon what? We're built upon that rock. We yeah. got a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been in a season when there's been some storms. Yeah. There's been some steer, yeah. spiritual storms. There's mm -hmm. been all sorts of turbulence going on around us. But the house that is built upon the rock. Yes. It's not going to fall. Yeah. You're not going to fall. You're on that firm foundation. Absolutely. So just hold steady yeah. to the word of God. That's such a good word, honey. Amen. So good. And uh, the context of that is hearing the sayings of Jesus. That's true. And then doing the yeah, sayings of Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Being doers. It's one thing to be a hearer of God's word. Yeah. For yeah. example, it's one thing to hear the message that I just preached. Yeah. I preached it with the best of my ability yeah, under the unction great. of the Holy yes, Spirit yes. to encourage the people. Amen. It's one thing to hear it and say, oh yeah, that was good. Yeah. But it's another thing to do something about it. Be doers. Amen. Yes. And that's yeah. what James chapter 122 says. Uh -huh. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, that's right. deceiving your own selves. You see, the enemy doesn't even really have to deceive people it's if they're true. not doing anything with the word they've heard. That is true. So I, I believe our bunch out there though are yeah. doers. Yeah. Say it with me out there today. I'm a doer. 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 Of the Word of God. Of the Word of God. And I am blessed. And I am blessed. In my doing. In my doing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And I just feel to just speak this over your households. That just keeps coming up in me about the households yeah. of faith. Household. You know what that is? That means that our households are different. Not that we're better than anyone no. else, but there is a marked difference, just like there was a marked difference in the land yeah. of Israel, in the land of Goshen, when they yeah. were getting ready, the Israelites, yes. to leave Egypt. There was darkness, there was mm -hmm. plagues all over Egypt, but not in the households of faith. Yeah. Not in the households that were in covenant Woo, with the covenant keeping God. So we're wow. here today to remind you, you have a covenant. So, Father, right now, yes, in yes, the name yes, of Lord. Jesus, Thank we you, speak Father. blessings over you, the Lord. household mm, of faith. And we thank you, Lord. Oh, though the winds may be howling, Lord, we thank you. There's protection, there's safety, there's light in the midst of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. There's supernatural provision for those that will hold fast to the word of God. God. Oh, Hallelujah. we thank you for it. So, Father, we thank you that mm -hmm. you have made a distinction. 
Yes, You have Lord. made a difference between yes. your people yes. and the people of the world. Yes, Lord. And you have placed a wall of redemption, a oh, wall yeah, of it. protection yes, around Lord. your very yes, own. Yes, Jesus. And so we declare mm. Psalms 91 yes, Lord. over the people at Heart of the Bay. We declare in the name of Jesus thank you, that Jesus. we are sheltered in the secret place oh, yes. of the Most High. Yes, thank you, and we, Lord. Salam broke de no, we and we are abiding under the shadow of El Shaddai. Yes, we are. And we are not those thank that you, back Jesus. down and back off, mm -mm. but we say boldly that, Lord, you are our refuge. You are. You are our fortress. Thank you, Jesus. You are our God. Mm. And in Him we live. And in Him we move. Yes, and Lord. in Him we have our being. Thank you, Jesus. And we trust you. And Lord, because Thank you, we Jesus. make you our refuge. Yes, you're our Even refuge. Even the Most High, mm -hmm. our dwelling place. Mm -hmm. We proclaim, Brenda and I, that no evil no shall evil. befall us. Shall no us. evil shall befall you. No evil Neither shall, shall any plague, no neither plague. shall any pestilence, no. neither shall any violence no. come nigh no. your no virus dwelling. In the name of not Jesus. near your body, not near your home, mm -mm. not near your mind, not near your, not near your place of business. No evil, no evil shall befall thee. The neither shall any plague Come nigh your dwelling. For Lord, we know mm -hmm. that you've given your angels. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, charge. Oh, thank you, Lord. A special charge over special people. <laughs> and you keep them. Yes, Lord. You protect thank you. them. Thank you, Lord. You provide for them in all of their ways. Yes, oh, Lord. Thank you for it. Hombre dice lebrando lo poco si que el me celebró la bastea en sombre quiste mando en be que celebró de el ecuso matique enese palonde and because you have done these things saith the lord my hand is upon thee my hand is upon your loved ones my eyes are watching over you saith the lord so fret not Worry not, I am your provider, I am your healer, and I am causing your lives to be strengthened, and I will even give you long life, and I will bring great satisfaction into your soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, but do not draw back. Keep your eyes upon me, and in that place you will surely see that I am your God, that my hand is upon you and I love you and things shall turn around for your good. Glory amen, to God. Amen. Glory to oh, God. Oh, we receive that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Le monte. Psalm 91, 16 says, with mm. long life. Long life. With long life. Not wrong life. Not wrong life. No. <laughs> with long life. Yeah. Will I satisfy Thank you Jesus. And show you my salvation, mm -hmm. my deliverance, yes, thank and you, my Lord. freedom. Thank you, Lord. See, long life, mm -hmm. a good life. Yeah. Not a not a just a barely getting along, eat no, by, squeak no, by life. No. What does John ten ten say? It says, I've come that you might I have and in, what? Enjoy. Enjoy life. In abundance. To the full. Till it runs over. That's what See, it says in the amplified. Till it overflows. <laughs> overflows. <laughs> life, life. We speak life amen, over your bodies. Amen, amen. We speak life to your soul. That's and we agree right. with you that it is well. It is well. Even though it may not feel well, even though it may not look well, we declare it is well. It is well. And thus saith the Lord, it shall be well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good. We should pray for people today that perhaps have never experienced salvation, mm. Mm, never point. ever yeah. had the, uh, the privilege of allowing, inviting Jesus yeah, to come into yeah. to their lives. So mm -hmm. I want you to lead in prayer and I'll confess along with you. All right. Father God, 
Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you in Jesus' name. I believe with all of my heart. I believe with all of my heart. That Jesus, you are the Son of God. That Jesus, you are the Son of God. That you died for me on the cross. That you died for me on the cross. To cleanse me of all unrighteousness. To cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And right now I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart. And right now I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that you are Lord. That you are Lord. I invite you to come into my life. I invite you to come into my life. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. To be my Lord and my Savior. To be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for making me a brand new person. Thank you for making me a brand new person. And for giving me eternal life. And for giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's so good. Yes. The Bible says that if Amen. any person that confesses yes. Jesus as their Lord becomes a new creation. That's right. Having right standing with God just yeah. like sin never Amen. existed before. Amen. We want to invite you to call in. Let us mm -hmm. know that you've been saved. And we'd love to be yes. able to minister to you some, some books and some things that would really help your spiritual life. Hey, it's been a great day here at Heart Amen. of the Bay. And Amen. we pray, praise God that the love of God yes. and the, the communion of the Holy Spirit right. be with all of you all day in Jesus' name. Amen.